Okay, guys, I think we're live. Uh, you know, we're testing this all for the first time. So, we might have to, uh, adjust some things and, uh, you know, potentially, um, make some, uh, adjustments to how we're doing it. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Um, yeah, we got this cool VTube, uh, character. Which allows me to uh, basically come on and present myself, and that's cool for interviews and uh, all that. Okay, so I'm seeing it sounds good. Um, so that's good. Uh, I'm going to show you guys this uh, documentation that we put together. I think it really looks great. Um, we're going to do the demo on Thursday when we do our, um, you know, our live uh voice chat that we do every Thursday, uh, really, I just got the demo back today, and I want to make sure that, um, I'm able to, to present it properly, and since this is our first time doing, uh, this kind of, uh, presentation, you know, I just wanted to make sure that I had it, uh, you know, set up right, I didn't want to try to do it, because really, the only thing I've done at, so far is uh, displaying something that I have in um, a browser. And I didn't want to be uh, trying to do something different live and trying to figure it out live. And the only way that uh, I could do it, you know, not live, is if I had the demo you know, far enough in advance. And we just got it right before, um, right before I went live. So... Okay, guys, let's uh, let's go over this doc, and um, yeah, I'm very excited for it. So here we go. Uh, let me pull it up. Okay, so this is the Piggy Plinko docs. I'm gonna go over the whole documentation, and there are some things that the documentation is um, uh, not leaving out, but we can add more. This is the first um, version of the docs. So there are some details we can add, such as like what the specific odds are um, and, you know, various stuff like that. But for right now, this is the core of the game. So, uh, it, you know, it's based all of it. I would say it's... Uh, uh, it's a completed white paper, uh, but there's always more information you can add, so we will do that. Uh, okay, uh, also, you know, this is my first time hosting our own live stream, so I'm not sure how much of a delay there is, if there is a delay, if there's latency issues, so, uh, you know, forgive any kind of issues we have, and, um, We'll get all of those straightened out, uh, you know, as we get more experience with using this kind of uh, hosting. So, as you can see, Piggy Plinko, where pigs and dogs come to play, play on, Animal Farm. Uh, here's our table of context. So, Piggy Plinko overview, what is it, how it works, how to play, uh, dog mode, which is uh, something that's going to be driving a lot of capital into the AFD token, the bankroll which is a basic explanation of how the bankroll mechanic uh, functions and how it best serves the player in the ecosystem. The Piggy Plinko mechanics, and this is um, specific to gameplay mechanics. So there's a lot of options that allow the user to build a, a wide variety of strategies. And this is what that is uh, relevant to. And then the ecosystem overview, and this is basically how it supports the ecosystem uh, overall. So not only how it benefits the players, but how it be uh, benefits the AFD token and how it benefits the platform as a whole um, through driving cash flows to the pig pen. So, okay, what is it? Uh, Piggy Plinko is a decentralized, immutable, on-chain crypto game where users drop chips into the animal, the animal farm pegboard, uh, to the, 
The payout is determined after the chips fall through the pegboard and land in a bucket where each bucket is assigned a multiplier. So this will make sense um, when we go down a little bit lower and uh, it shows an example of how the pegboard and slots are uh, designed. But essentially, it's a pegboard and at the bottom, there's a, a range of slots and each slot has an associated multiplier and the multipliers can range from say uh, 0.4x to uh, 70x and in the case of uh, 0.4x if your um, if the Plinko uh, chip or puck whatever you want to call it lands in the 0.4x slot for example the the result of the game is essentially a uh, a sixty percent loss on that bet. If you land in the seventy uh, x slot, then you've essentially won seventy times what you just bet on the game. And the way that the slots are distributed are um, designed in a way where the higher multipliers are um, more rare. So you have a higher probability of landing in the uh, lower tier prizes, of course. And it works out, so there's a slight house edge, but the way the bankroll works, it's um, a slight house edge over time. And what that means is any individual player can have an edge. Any individual player can make a massive return, but over time, over many bets, the house will make a slight profit and that slight profit is what's going to be utilized to inject capital into the pig pen and uh, support the AFD token. So um, now the supporting of the AFD token is not just reliant on this edge but also um, the dog mode which we'll go into. Now how it works. Uh, Piggy Plinko utilizes the robust and reliable Chainlink VRF, which is a model that allows you to return a random seed. Uh, Piggy Plinko then utilizes the seed to derive verifiably fair game results that are ra that are fully randomized, which means you can cross-reference the outcome of Chainlink to verify that the outcomes of your game were truly random and verifiably fair. So we're using cryptographic proofs to ensure the user that the games are not rigged, which is a major, major uh, leverage and upper hand that we have on all of the competition. Because if you look at, for example, Rubet, or you look at Stake, there is nothing verifying that those games are not rigged. Now, I would never, without any evidence, say that their games are rigged, specifically when I'm talking about an individual platform, but I can guarantee you that a lot of these online casinos are rigged, and these these games where you're winning digital assets are rigged and what our goal with piggy plinko and all of the games that we're building is to give a user experience that is on par or better than what rubet and stake and all these other major gaming platforms offer with verifiably fair and random uh, game outcomes. So cryptographic proofs that our games are fair. So what we've developed is a game that is on par or better than what these centralized models offer with cryptographic proof that our games are fair. And that gives us a major uh, upper hand on all of the competition, uh, especially because we have the same uh, commission structure and the same uh, 
referral model that is used by these platforms that allow influencers to, um, you know, uh, play games on stream and make significant uh, capital through onboarding users to the platform. And it's just going to be a major vehicle for um, us to promote the games, but also Animal Farm as a whole and drive cash flow and capital into Animal Farm. Um, primarily because the product that we're offering is better than all of the competition. And we know that these products have extremely high demand. I mean, these, uh, our competition are doing hundreds of millions of dollars worth of volume every month. And that's without having cryptographically proven fair games, right? So, um, our model and our gameplay is uh, on par, right? If not better than what they offer. So I'm very, very excited for it. And on Thursday, we're going to show a demo of the games. Um, I got the demo back today, uh, essentially right before we were going to go live. And I just didn't want to rush it because you only have one chance to make a first impression. So... Uh, I would rather get the demo live today and show it on Thursday than get it back right before we go live and then try to rush it. So um, let's continue. Um, this provides players with a provably fair outcome, which are impossible to corrupt. So it's very important. Another uh, major uh, benefit that we have through working with Chainlink is that Chainlink is... Um, uh, they, they are open to doing co-promotion because we're going to be utilizing their, their services and that's something that they're uh, very happy about and they will be doing co-promotions, uh, you know, letting their community know that we're implementing their services for something that's truly innovative. Uh, now, how to play. Uh, players can place bets in Piggy Plinko with four different tokens and this is starting, right? We potentially will add additional options but we're starting with afd aft i'm sorry afd afp busd and bnb and the prizes are paid out in the token wager uh except if the user is playing in dog mode so dog mode is a mode that you can set in game and it allows you to put a 10% increase multiplier on the outcomes of the game. So dog mode pays better. Players placing bets with BNB or BUSD earn a 10% payout increase if they choose to have their prizes paid out in AFD. The prizes they would receive are used to purchase AFD, substantially increasing buy pressure. And what this means is each token has its own bankroll. So when you play with AFD, it has its own AFD bankroll. When you play with BUSD, it has its own BUSD bankroll. And what Dogmo does is it takes the prizes that are paid out from the BNB or the BUSD bankroll, buys AFD with them, and then gives the user who just won that prize in dog mode a 10% bonus in the AFD token. So the way that that works is it increases the multipliers on the, uh, the various prizes. So it's not, uh, for example... Um, minting 10% more dogs to make that 10% or it's not um, taking 10% of the dogs out of the dog's bankroll, for example. No, what it's doing is it's giving a bonus which is coming out of the BNB or BUSD bankroll that is used to buy the AFD token. So if... Say you were playing, um, say you were playing with the BNB, um, 
bankroll, so you're playing with BNB and taking the prizes in BNB, and you land on a 1x multiplier slot. What that means is that you just won essentially your bet back. So you bet, um, uh, so you bet one BNB, you just won one BNB back. If you were playing on dog mode, then you would have just bet one BNB, and the BNB bankroll would, uh, instead of it being a one X slot, it would be a one point one X slot. So essentially, you'd be making back 1.1 BNB. And this will incentivize people to take their prize in AFD. And it's going to be a major cash flow into the AFD token. Because people that are involved in the ecosystem uh, anyways, that want to further invest into AFD, it makes sense to bet with BNB or BUSD and get your prizes in AFD because you want to play the game anyways. You want to further your exposure to AFD. You might as well put a, uh, you might as well play in dog mode and get a 10% bonus on your prizes. It will also incentivize people who are not part of our community who get exposure to the game because their favorite influencer is playing it and they're interested in playing these kinds of games. They see, okay, I could play on Stake. I could play on Rubet. I could play on this other platform. I have no idea if the games are rigged or not. The games are likely rigged, you know, in all honesty. Or I could play where my favorite streamer is playing. I could have cryptographic proofs that the outcomes of my games are fair. And... If I want to play in BUSD and get my reward in BUSD, I can do that. It allows me to play a game non-KYC because users can either use capital that they already have on chain to buy BNB or buy USD and play with it. Or people will be able to use our fiat on-ramp to buy BNB or buy USD non-KYC and start playing the game immediately. So if you look at Rubet or you look at Stake or really any of the major platforms, in order to set up an account with them, you need to KYC. And if you're, uh, for example, uh, in Germany, you're not even allowed to use those services. And a lot of other countries, you're not able to use those services. In Animal Farm, and in uh, Piggy Plinko and all of the other games that we'll have available, you'll be able to buy BNB, BUSD, AFD, AFP, whatever you want to play with, with your credit or debit card, non-KYC, start playing, and have cryptographic proof that the games are fair. These are all things that none of our competition offer. And then... Maybe you see, okay, I could take the prize in AFD, get a 10% bonus multiplier, and that's not only going to incentivize people to do that, that otherwise might have no interest in the ecosystem, they just want to come and play the games, it will also encourage them to learn more about our platform because they'll see the bonus, and maybe right away they, they decide not to take the bonus, but maybe it has them look at the white paper or maybe it has them look at our wiki and start to learn the ecosystem and next thing you know we have a full-blown uh community member and um and someone that's utilizing our platform to earn yield you know in bnb and busd so this is going to be a very powerful tool to onboard users from the games into the overall ecosystem and drive a lot of cash flow into the afd token because our game is offering utility and access that none of our competitions are offering. And uh, on top of that, has these in additional incentive structures to onboard them into the overall ecosystem. Okay, now the bankroll. So I, I discussed this uh, a little bit earlier, 
but I'm going to uh, this gets a little more into the details now how do you guys like the aesthetics of the docs I think they're pretty cool I think these are some of the coolest documentations that we've ever made I think they look amazing uh, we have amazing artists and amazing writers that helped us with this and you guys can tell that we're continually continually stepping up our game and we're continuously stepping up the quality that we're delivering and a lot of that is due to us adding members to our team such as strong artists strong writers um it's extremely exciting and i think it's um the proof is in the pudding right this is just the documentation but the products the contracts and ui that we're delivering is really next level and it's largely due to us adding uh some very skilled uh, additional members to our team. So this is going into the details of the um, the bankroll. So you can see the pig here saying, the bankroll consists of pools of tokens that are wagered. So each playable token has its own bankroll, allowing for unique game mechanics, prize payouts, and the handling of excess tokens to be best support uh, to best support the player and the health of the ecosystem and what that means is you can play in bnb you can play with busd you can play with afp and you can play with afd but not all of the tokens are handled the same way by the bankroll due to the tokenomics of the various uh assets we're handling them differently to best support the player and the overall health of the ecosystem. And what it looks like is BUSD earned by the house is pooled and directly used to support the ecosystem. And there's a map lower in the documents that show exactly how this uh, is distributed. Um, BNB earned by the house is pooled and directly utilized to support the ecosystem. AFP, which is earned by the house, is permanently locked in the pig pen, where it earns BUSD, and this BUSD is then used to support the ecosystem. So, rather than taking the house edge in AFP tokens and selling the AFP tokens or uh, utilizing the AFP tokens to secure a profit or anything like that, they're staked in the pig pen where they then earn BUSD. And that way we have a BUSD cash flow, which is coming from people playing with the AFP token that does not rely on selling the AFP token. And in fact, because it's permanently locked in the pig pen, those AFP tokens are permanently removed from circulation and can never be sold. So not only is it creating a... BUSD cash flow for the pig pen and for the overall ecosystem, right? For marketing, for prize payouts, uh, for uh, all associated costs. It's also removing those pigs from circulation in a way that can never be added back into the market. It can never be used to provide sell pressure. So it's allowing the AFP token to be uh, further uh, deflationary while still generating a cash flow for the game and for the um, uh, for the ecosystem. And that's the same with AFD. AFD earned by the house is permanently locked in the dog pound where it earns BNB and this BNB is then uh, used to support the ecosystem. And what that looks like is um, being swapped for BUSD for pig pen injections, uh, being utilized for a marketing budget, and um, all other associated costs. Now, because there's a um, uh, only a slight house edge of around 2%, that means that um, somewhere around 98% of the uh, AFP or AFD or BNB or BUSD that's going into the game is being distributed back out in prizes and um 
that allows any individual player to uh, potentially make a ton of profit in the games, but still having a um, a cash flow for the rest of the ecosystem and to uh, support the pig pen and, and everything else involved in the ecosystem. You know, support the um, the value of the tokens to removing them from circulation, uh, supporting the the tokens by creating cash flow, driving the BNB and BUSD to buy back the AFD token in the dog mode and all of the other mechanics that I'll be getting into later. Now, the max bet size is variable and calculated off of the current bankroll using a Kelly criterion. And this is essentially just a calculation to ensure that the bankroll is always sustainable and it allows the max bet size to grow as the bankroll grows. So as the bankroll grows, it allows for larger bet sizes. And um, because we're always taking a percentage of the capital earned by the house and letting it build up in the bankroll, it allows us to have a compounding growth of the bankroll and an ever-increasing max bet size to allow for uh, eventually extremely large wagers to take place on our platform. Now, we're going to uh, pre-fund the bankrolls. So uh, from day one, people will be able to do good-sized bets. And then as we grow, those max bet sizes will grow as well. And bankroll contracts are designed to support any EVM token, allowing us to create utility for partner tokens and collaboration to support the Animal Farm ecosystem. So if we were to uh, work out a partnership deal where we want to uh, offer our game to a potential partner, we could do that. People would then be able to wager our partner's token in the game. And a percentage of the profits earned by the house in the partner's token would be utilized to support the ecosystem for pig pen injections and um, uh, all other uh, associated uh, ways that is supporting the ecosystem, which I'll get into a little bit lower. Okay, so the mechanics. Now, we'll be able to show a, a little more in the demo as far as how these mechanics work, but this should give a good idea um, uh, for the user and for people that are reading the docs. You should get a good idea of how these mechanics work from the documents themselves because we've given um, examples and images to get the point across here. So, Piggy Plinko Mechanics. The first step in the Piggy Plinko experience is to understand how the game variabilities are modified according to the individual player's desired settings. And it allows you to create a uh, strategy that can be used to uh, take advantage of your own uh, uh, gameplay. And you can choose the risk level you want, you can choose the amount of rows, um, and a wide variety of settings that allow you to uh, essentially build a strategy uh, and set stop loss and profit um, targets that will essentially uh, take profit on your behalf or cut your losses uh, based on the specific strategy that you have set up. So... Uh, risk factor. The risk factor, uh, currently we have low, medium, le medium, high, is applied to modify the multiplier, the multiplier of each bucket at the bottom of the board, increasing the res risk factor, allowing players to access larger rewards. So what this does is allows you to choose a, a risk, um, a risk factor that will either give you a higher probability of winning a prize but 
the potential prize sizes are lower or have a lower probability of winning a prize, but the potential prizes that you can win are much higher. And through manipulation of the risk factor and rows, you can set up some very interesting strategies. Now, Plinko size. The Plinko size is used to adjust the number of rows and buckets uh, on the pegging board. So you can choose to adjust the Plinko size between 8 to 16 rows. And there's some granularity there where you can, uh, there, there's many options in between. And then here's an example of what this looks like. So this is an example of a low risk with the fewest rows. And as you can see here, if you were to land on the middle, you would get a 0.4 multiplier. So essentially, you would win back 40% of your bet. Then, 60% of your bet, 90% of your bet, right? So you can see here that you're, you, you're never going to lose your full bet, right? Worst case scenario, the, your worst possible outcome of the game is that you get 40% of your bet back. But if you land on these two outer rows, you're going to win four times your bet or t over 20 times your bet, right? And... This is with this specific setting. Now, if you were to adjust it here, you can see the risk factor is all the way up, which means there are more slots that have a multiplier under 1x, which means you will lose a portion of your bet if it lands in these slots. But... The slots that are uh, profitable, the ones where you will win a prize, are much larger. And you can see here that it's uh, the max amount of rows and the max amount of risk. And the outer um, uh, slots have up to 120x. So if you land on this slot, you're going to win 120 times what your bet is. And if you were to do, for example, only eight rows and high risk, these outside um, uh, buckets are going to be even higher multipliers because it's uh, the, the multipliers will be less spread out across the rows. So you can really mix and match to pick a strategy that is going to uh, allow you to exploit the uh, the game how you want based on your strategy and there's all kinds of options okay wager uh, play and, and as soon as we get out of this um, this stream we're gonna publish these docs so I'm gonna post them in the call channel and on our social media and all over the place so you guys can check them out uh, okay Wagers. Players set up their wager, size of bet, and multiple bets, uh, the number of chips to be dropped on the board, to determine their total wager, the amount bet. So, what this allows you to do is choose the token that you want to wager, the amount that you want to wager, and how many bets you want to split this wager across. And... Once you set the amount of wagers, or, or once you set the amount of bets and your wager size, and the risk factor and the amount of rows you want, you can then click uh, a go, essentially. It's um, uh, play, and it will start dropping pucks, and... Uh, it allows you to have essentially no wait time between bets. So you don't have to wait for any VRF call uh, to be made.
between each bet. You're going to place your wager, and the next VRF call that comes back is going to determine the outcome of all of your wagers. So it allows you to have a seamless gameplay experience where you can do 50 bets in a row and have continuous gameplay with uh, out any wait time between your rolls. And it's important to have a model like this uh, because it allows us to do a, uh, a gameplay experience that is on par with what uh, like Stake or Rubet would offer. Uh, now, the reason why I say it's important that we do it like this is because, of course, with something like like uh, our competitors, our centralized competitors, it's fully centralized, which means they can show the results of the games instantly. And the downside to that is you have no idea, if, as a player, if the results of these games are legitimate or not. They could be completely rigged. You know, and many, many of these platforms have been proven to be rigged. So, with our model, we have chained the wagers together. So, not only can you do up to 50 wagers in one VRF call, we're bundling players to base the results of their game on one VRF call that is serving multiple blocks. So, this is, um, when I say that there's a little more detail that can be added to the to the white paper, uh, it's mostly... Um, in relation to these very technical details, which we will add, but we wanted to give a, a great overview from a perspective that the average user will appreciate. And if we get way too into the weeds, um, a lot of people will just get lost. So this is going over all of the major mechanics that are interested or, or are interesting to the average user. But the mechanic that I just explained, not only does it allow us to save on Oracle fees, it allows for a very short wait time to get the cryptographically uh, verifiably fair results of the game. So what that looks like is, say I make a wager. And I'm the first person to make a wager since the last time a VRF call is returned. When I make that wager, a VRF call is made. And it takes about three blocks for Chainlink to return the random value. So in that six seconds of wait time... There's uh, the essentially the animation happens, the gameplay animation happens. So it's from a gameplay experience that six seconds is not wasted. It's not like you're just sitting there doing nothing. You're watching the gameplay happen like you would be on stake or Rubet or any of the competitors. And that person who made that VRF call is. Anybody who wagers after them is only waiting for his VRF call to come back to get the results of their game as well, which means they have to wait even less time. So someone can make a, a wager. If they're the first one to make the wager since the last VRF call, they can do up to 50 bets themselves based on that one VRF call, which means there's, you know, uh, at least at least a minute to a minute and a half worth of gameplay that they're watching. And it only takes about 7 to 10 seconds for the VRF call to come back. And anybody that makes a wager after him 
in between the time that he made his wager and that VRF call comes back, they get bundled in to that VRF call so they don't have to wait for their own VRF call to come back. They just have to wait for his VRF call to come back, which means they they don't even have to wait the 7 to 10 seconds. They just need to wait however long it's been uh, basically uh, the 7 to 10 seconds minus whatever time in between when they made their wager and when the wager went out that made the VRF call. So not only does it save a ton on VRF calls, because only one person is paying for the uh, the VRF call, which then services all users that come after them, and the VRF call is very cheap anyways. It's like it's it costs a few cents, uh, but it's still good to be as efficient as possible when it comes to saving uh, capital. Uh, more importantly than saving the few cents for everybody is the fact that bundling wagers in one VRF call allows it to be a uh, a, a seamless uh, return of uh, the outcomes of the games and essentially little to no wait time. So the only wait time that the user needs to experience to see the outcome of the game is the amount of time that it takes for the uh, the animation of the game to play out. So the puck to drop down. So it's exactly the gameplay, exactly the efficiency and the, um, you know, just the seamless, quick, fun gameplay that you would get on all of the centralized competitors with verifiable, uh, uh, cryptographically proven fair outcomes, which is something that none of them can provide. So, it's 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 very far ahead of any of the potential competition because of those reasons. And you know, I'm very excited to show a demo, um, but we're going to have uh, what we're looking at right now is we're going to have uh, the we're going to produce the docs today. We're going to produce a, a demo on Thursday. We're going to most likely the following week get something up on the UI which allows us to direct people to from marketing. Uh, so essentially a game tab on Animal Farm where people can click the game tab, click um, Piggy Plinko, have all of the documentation and all of the promotional material there with, uh, you know, essentially a coming soon. So we can start directing people there for marketing. The following week, we want to get out a, uh, a, a test net and uh, allow for our, um, uh, our, our, the public to do a live um, test net play. And then a, uh, releasing the launch date the following week and going live uh, two weeks after that because we want to have at least two weeks of promoting the launch date. So that's what our our, our roadmap is looking like right now. Uh, so essentially, you're going to see progress every week. Every week, we're going to be taking the next step to our launch to allow us to build. And um, uh, every week our community will have something to engage with that gets us one step significantly closer to launch. So that's what it's looking like. Um, so players, the Kelly criterion, this is just a little more info about this. Um, players can place maximum wagers as determined by the Kelly criterion, a formula used for determining optimal bet size. The formula uses the game's probabilities and multipliers to calculate the Kelly fraction. The combination of the bankroll value and the Kelly fraction allows calculation of the perfect Kelly bet, the maximum wager a player can place in the game. Sustainability. 
the sustainability of the bankroll is ensured by automatically adjusting the max wager. These Kelly calculations are also critical to ensure bankroll can't be drained by any combination of wagers. So the max bet size is constantly adjusting based on what the bankroll is for that specific asset that's being bet. Stop gains and stop losses. Players can set stop gains and stop losses. Uh, I'm going to have that switch to uh, uh, profit limits and stop losses or, or something like that. Um, but players can set stop gains and stop losses when placing multiple bets. Piggy Plinko will end when the stop gain or stop loss has been reached or when the number of wagers that you set uh, plays out to completion. Players can only... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Players pay only for the games that have been played up to and including the game in which the stop was triggered. And what this allows you to do is set up a strategy that you think will be uh, favorable for you and put a limit on what, when you want to take profit and when you want to take losses based on that strategy. So uh, if you have a hypothesis which is telling you I should be profitable based on the Kelly calculation, the max bet wager, the current bankroll, the amount of rows I set, the the risk setting, the risk factor I chose. I should be profitable after this many bets. So if I'm not profitable after this many bets or I've lost this much capital after this many bets, stop the gameplay And it doesn't matter if I chose 50 wagers. If I hit my profit when only 42 wagers, or if I've lost the amount of capital that I'm willing to lose on this hypothesis after 32 wagers, it doesn't matter if you you chose 50 wagers, it will stop when you hit that limit. And this allows you to both set profit targets where you're where you're saying, okay, I want to walk away after I've made this much profit or set uh, profit losses where you're saying, okay, I want to risk this much. And at any point, if I've lost more than this, it's going to automatically stop for me. And this allows players to play responsibly, to set up strategies that allow them to walk away with profit. And as I said, because the house edge is so small and because uh, we're, we th- there's so many different strategies that you can use, and because the max bet size is always adjusting, uh, it is profit. It, it is very possible to walk away with a lot of money from these games, um, and these systems allow you to set uh, targets where you want to walk away, whether it goes in your favor or not. Which I think is very important to allow people to play responsibly and to. Uh, basically go into the game with a set amount of risk that they want to take and um, and have that automated in the system. I think it's important. So um, that is a very cool mechanic that we added. Okay, now, the ecosystem overview. Animals need to be fed. Uh, BNB and BUSD from house earnings are collected into a pool the AFD and AFP from house earnings are put into the dog pound and the pig pen where they generate BNB and BUSD. The BNB and BUSD generated from both the uh, dog pound and pig pen stakes and the BNB and BUSD from the uh, house earnings are uh, collected and distributed across the ecosystem as shown below. So uh, the dis- now, these values could be uh, adjusted, but this is the uh, working model that we have right now, which should be uh, strong, right? It should be very strong because you have to consider that this is not the only way that it's supporting the ecosystem. Uh, through the dog mode and through the massive marketing vehicle, 
that we'll be able to utilize this as by taking major streamers and having them pay the streamers, uh, having them play the game online and direct users into the platform is going to be a massive tool, right? A massive tool to support the ecosystem. But the current distribution is 15% for marketing, 35% for a dev fee, 10% for an Oracle fee. And this just ensures that there's always a pool to pay the Oracle fee. So the, it's uh, sustainable in that sense. And 40% to pig pen injections. Now, when we're talking about these percentages, it's not, um, of course, 15% or 35% or any percent off a specific bet. This is just from what the house earns over time. So what out of the profit that the house earns over time, it's distributed in these ways with the pig pen being the, the majority beneficiary. So the majority of the capital being earned, uh, the majority of the profit being earned in the games are distributed back to the pig pen, allowing the pig pen stakers to earn and be the primary beneficiary as owners of the games. Uh, the 15% marketing budget will not be used to market the animal farm as a whole. We already have a significant budget to market the animal farm as a whole. This 15% will be specifically focused on bringing on major influencers who are going to be playing the games on stream. That's going to be the major focus and on top of this marketing budget that we'll be able to have to to pay those streamers uh there's also a commission structure and the commission structure is laddered so uh it will allow uh referrers and affiliates to earn anywhere from three percent to uh potentially higher than 10% of the uh, cash flow that they're generating for the games by people watching their stream or seeing their content and utilizing their referral link. So a percentage of what the uh, house earns from any user that is onboarded from a referral link, uh, a percentage of that goes to the referrer themselves. And we know that that model works very, very well. It's the reason why uh, Stake and Rubet are paying out millions and millions of dollars every year to streamers that stream the games on their platforms. Uh, it's because uh, the house as a whole is able to make everything that they pay out plus some. And at the end of the day, the majority of that capital that's coming in is going into the pig pen to pay the pig pen stakers. So... We needed to ensure that, for one, the pig pen stakers are the primary beneficiaries. We need to ensure that we have a marketing budget that will allow us to pay these major streamers, you know, because it's, uh, it's worthwhile to do, right? They're expensive, but they, uh, they bring on more capital than what they cost, so it's worthwhile to do. And we need to ensure that the dev fee is enough that we can have high quality de uh, developers come on and um, and make it worthwhile for them as well and worthwhile for the team. And when you look at what any of our competitors are doing, it's a marketing budget and uh, essentially an owner's uh, percentage. So... Anywhere from uh, 85 to 95 percent of the profit earned by the house is going to the owners, and the anywhere from five to 15 percent is going towards their marketing budget. And then there's very small associated costs with you know upkeep of the platform and all of that. Uh, in our model, 40 percent of everything earned goes back to the community as owners of the product. 
which is uh, unprecedented. It's huge. And one of the reasons why we're able to do that is because we put a lot of work into uh, making our uh, Oracle calls extremely efficient. Uh, and that allows us to take some of the cost that would otherwise be going through that and uh, allocate it to the pig pen injections instead. So this is something that no one else offers, right? No one else offers a game that has a, uh, a gameplay that is on par with the current centralized um, uh, competitors is cryptographically fair with cryptographically proven random outcomes and over 40% of all the profit generated by the house goes back to the users of the platform as owners of the platform through AFP staking. And this just further solidifies the incentive structure of Animal Farm and AFP. And especially when you consider that people can choose to take their prizes in the AFD token to get that uh, that prize multiplier, which in turn allows them to utilize that AFD token to increase their ownership of the platform, get put into the vesting model, and earn their share of the 40% profit margin, which is going to uh, AFP, AFP stakers. Uh, okay, let me keep going. Um, one second, I'm just going to quiet my dog. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, let me just get my headphones on. Okay, so now, as you can see here, uh, we're just, uh, this part of the white paper is mostly just talking about the um, base mechanics of Animal Farm and why this game uh, creates a uh, another massive incentive structure and cash flow to support our existing ecosystem, right? So people who claim their prize in AFD receive a 10% payout increase for helping to support the health of the ecosystem and for uh, creating a ca cash flow for the AFD token. And, uh, of course, all AFD tokens start out with the variable uh, tax vesting model where AFD tokens can be staked in either the uh, linear uh, dog pound where their tax is reduced by 0.75% a day and they earn BNB, or the auto compound pool where they're reducing their tax by 1% a day and earning the AFD BNB uh, distribution, which is farming the governance token AFP, allowing them to increase their ownership of the farm and in turn, not only getting their share of all the profits generated by the games, but by every other cash flow associated with the platform. And today, uh, we just got out of a meeting um, where we're addressing the single asset uh, lending product. And we're looking at doing something very, very powerful. So not just bridge options for lending, but uh, potentially some very other... Uh, strong utility that will allow users to earn significantly more yield from, from their single asset staking that does not rely on us paying out those rewards in AFD. So, 
uh, we have a ton of cash flows coming to the pig pen, and this is just one of them. But this is a very powerful one. The product alone that we're offering is extremely high demand, and there's no one else offering the product that we're offering. But what might be even just as much um, as a benefit is the fact that it allows us to have a this awesome vehicle for onboarding new users through giving a uh, something that people can easily make content around and something that someone that has no idea anything about DeFi can get involved with and play. Um, the fact that they can buy tokens to play with with no KYC using their credit or debit card and also cash out back into uh, fiat is something that no one else offers, centralized or decentralized. And the fact that we offer that with cryptographic proofs of fairness and distributing the majority of the profit earned by the house back to the user there it's a no-brainer like anybody that's interested in playing these games uh will be heavily incentivized to play on our platform over any of our competition okay so here is um the diagram so this is uh, a mapping of how the distributions work essentially so as you can see here each player can decide what token they want to play with now let me go down to the legend so you see uh, a black regular arrow is always so that means this cash flow always happens yellow means the cash flow is swapped for busd and injected into the pig pen orange means that the prize is paid out in AFD with a 10% bonus. And greed means it's swapped for link and deposited into the Oracle fund only when the funds are low. So let me just explain this um, in a way that I think is easy to understand. So when a user plays, if they play with BNB, BUSD, AFD, uh, I mean AFP or AFT. They make their wager. If there is plenty of funds in the Oracle Fund, then they do not pay anything towards the Oracle Fund. And the token that they just wagered goes immediately into the bankroll. The bankroll... In the case of AFD or AFP, does not send any AFP or AFD to the Oracle Fund. It sends the AFD and AFP to the pig pen and to the dog pound or as payout to players. That's the only place that the AFD or AFP can go to, either paid back out as prizes as prizes to the players that are playing in AFP and AFD or to the pig pen or the dog pound this ensures that we're never selling AFP or AFD to allow the games to be sustainable and to pay for the oracle fund the only time AFD or AFP is swapped for link to pay the oracle fund is if there is no capital in the Oracle Fund and they're the wager that needs to make the VRF call. So as I was explaining earlier, when a wager is made, if a VRF call has already been made and we're waiting for it to come back, those wagers don't pay for the VRF. They just get bundled in with the person that's already made the VRF call. Because what we do is we get the random value back from 
the VRF call and then use that one random seed to generate a bunch of random values. And then those random values that are derived from that one random seed are used to assign prizes. So the only case that AFP or AFD is ever sold to pay the Oracle fee is if there is no capital in the Oracle fund and that person happens to be the first person to do a wager after the last VRF call was returned, right? Which is likely going to look like something like one in every 500 users or something. And that would only be if there was no funds in the Oracle fund, which the way that we have this designed is that should never be the case. But we always need to have a backup to cover any edge cases. So in some extreme edge case where it just so happens for whatever reason there's no funds in the oracle fund and the person doing the wager is the first person to do a wager since the last vrf call comes back we still ensure that the gameplay can happen uh because uh afp or afd associated with that wager will be used to make the oracle call which means something like uh a few cents worth of the AFD or AFP will be sold for Link to uh, do the wager. Uh, now, if you're playing with BNB or BUSD, if there's no funds in the uh, Oracle fund and you're the first person to do a wager uh, since the last VRF call was returned, then what happens is a small portion of the wager, a few cents of it, is used to pay the Oracle fund that way to make the VRF call. And the rest goes into the bankroll, which is then used to both pay out prizes to the player and send an injection so swap the BNB for BUSD, and with the case of BUSD, there is no swap. It just gets immediately sent to the pig pen for an injection. If so, it can, it's being sent to the pig pen as a BUSD injection and paid out in prizes to the player. If the player decides he wants to play in dog mode. And get his reward from the BNB or BUSD bankroll paid out in AFD instead of BNB or BUSD, then that BNB and BUSD prize that they're getting paid out has a 10% bonus applied to it and is paid out to the player. So it still comes out of the BNB or BUSD bankroll, but it's swapped for AUSD. I mean, sorry, it's swapped for AFD with the bonus and paid out to the player. Now, the house edge, the, the, the slight house edge, which is going to be generating a profit, is building up, and when it hits a threshold, and right now the threshold we're looking at is around $2,000, so when around $2,000 worth of BNB or BUSD builds up, it swaps it, it swaps 10% of it for Link, sends it to the Oracle Fund. It swaps 40% of it for BUSD, sends it to the pig pen. It swaps 50% of, uh, 15% of it for likely BUSD, uh, sends it to the marketing budget. It swaps 35% and sends to the dev fee. And the dog pound, which is generating B B and B, that's coming from the portion of the bankroll associated with the, uh, with the AFD bankroll that would otherwise be going to marketing, dev fee, uh, pig pen injections, all of that. 
instead of selling dogs, instead of selling AFD for BUSD and the other assets, it's being staked in the dog pound where it's earning BNB. 40% of that BNB is being swapped for BUSD and injected into the pig pen. And uh, the rest is being allocated as was uh, laid out above as far as the distributions go. So the primary beneficiaries here are the players and the pig pen. So the players are getting something like 98% of all the capital going into the bankroll being paid out to them as prizes. And in the case that they decide to take the prize in AFD, they're getting that plus a 10% bonus. 40% of the house earnings get swapped for BUSD and paid out to the pig pen, making them the primary beneficiaries of the house edge. So the players and the pig pen are the primary beneficiaries of the ecosystem uh, or, or are the primary beneficiaries of any capital that goes into the bankroll. And then of the capital that gets paid out of the BNB and BUSD bankroll, the AFD token is uh, benefiting massively because it's getting that uh, cash flow from the BNB and BUSD. So there are a lot of and or uh, statements associated with how the bankroll and how the Oracle fund is uh, handled. And we're going to release a, uh, a more technical version of the white paper. Uh, and really get into the nitty gritty details of it. But we wanted something here where we can provide a visual representation of how the cash flows are happening and how it allows for the players and the pig pet stakers to be the primary beneficiaries. Okay. And then um, uh, that's it. So I think you guys see that we put a lot of work into this. We're offering something that is not available anywhere else. We're really going to try to uh, essentially take the market share of all these centralized competitors. And I believe we can do it because we're offering a gameplay that is better. We're offering cryptographically proven fair games. We're paying out over 40% of the capital that would otherwise be going to the house back to the user if they utilize their winnings to enter back into the ecosystem through the um, uh, dog mode or through taking advantage of the other products on our ecosystem. And we're creating a massive new vehicle for promotion that we can on board people that have no interest in DeFi but just want to be able to play games without having to KYC, being able to use their credit or debit, and have them be verifiably fair, which is something that no one else offers. And when you guys see the demo, I think it's really going to cl click because you're going to see uh, how seamless and how cool the gameplay is. It's, uh, it's really, in my opinion, better than what the centralized... Uh, models are offering and with a benefit that they could never offer which is a shared ownership with the user and cryptographically fair games so it's very powerful guys uh i'm gonna keep this um nice and succinct because i want this just to be a uh a stream for people that want to come and get info about the documentation uh We'll do another follow-up one, a more technically detailed one, um, and also one where I'm a little more uh, comfortable and familiar with streaming like this because it's my first time doing it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed me uh, using uh, our, our uh, avatar. Uh, the uh, Alcoy Buzz interview um, 
That's going up live tomorrow at 10. It was scheduled to go up today at 10. Uh, They let us know last minute that they accidentally uh, published the non-edited version. So we did like a two-hour interview. They edited it down to like 35 minutes. And for whatever reason, they uploaded the two-hour long version. And there was like small talk and, you know, talk about how we wanted it edited and all of that. So, you know, that couldn't be be showed. So what they did, uh, they pushed it back till tomorrow. And for the inconvenience, they're promoting it on their social media, which is something they weren't doing before. And they are uh, offering us another uh, another interview, which is great. So make sure you guys check out the Altcoin Buzz interview tomorrow. And on Thursday, we will have our AMA uh, voice chat as usual, and we will be able to show a demo there. Uh, A demo that we already have, but uh, because this is the first time using the streaming software, uh, and I've only ever streamed like this, screen sharing a browser, I didn't want to uh, risk trying something new live. So uh, I appreciate all you guys. I'm going to log off now. And uh, my dog says hi. You can hear him in the background. And uh, thank you all. See you later. See you in the Animal Farm group. Uh, Make sure you go to animalfarm.app. And um, make sure you go to uh, Animal Farm DeFi on Twitter. And uh, on Telegram, it is uh, t.me forward slash the underscore animal underscore farm. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you all.